I've created an update to the software which I use to control my Christmas lights using Raspberry Pi. The last version I created was about seven years ago and this is a change I've been thinking of doing for a while. The program still works in the same way but due to a bit of frustration over my memory I've decided to make some changes to make it easy to use and a way to customize the interface. So the project is a web application and it provides remote controls to the energy in the power sockets as shown here on the right. And it uses a Pi Moat which connects the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and that provides a way to send the signals to turn the sockets on and off. In my original version I created a basic interface and it allows you to turn four sockets on and off individually or controlling all four simultaneously. And this works well but for my memory I couldn't remember whether I'd use switch one for my outdoor Christmas lights or for the indoor Christmas tree. I therefore wanted a way of showing which was which on the web interface. I could have done that by just editing the HTML file and changing the names of these sockets here. But I wanted to do something more than that. I wanted to make it a bit more user friendly. So here's the new interface I created and it shows a Christmas tree for my Christmas tree. Now, turns out it was socket one after all. A shape of a house for the outdoor lights and then I've added two more, one for a generic set of fairy lights and one for a Christmas star. I haven't added an all on or all off button which I had on my previous one because I found I really needed that. It's easy enough just to press the individual buttons. I switch on to my system here. Now, this is running on a Raspberry Pi. It's on a 7 inch official Raspberry Pi touchscreen, which is why the display here is such low resolution. The first file to be aware of is the template file, and that's kept in the views folder. I'll show you the image.tpl file. And as you can see, it's just standard HTML file in here. It does have a few substitutions, which is why it's a template using these uh, theme variables here, which allows you to have a single template with multiple themes underneath it. There shouldn't be any need to edit these template files, but it does give you an awful lot of flexibility if you wanted to design it differently. And then the themes are placed in the public directory and they're named after the template, in this case the image template, followed by an underscore and the theme name, in this case Christmas. And this is where you would put your images and optionally you could edit the CSS file yourself as well. And here you can see the the images I've used. These use open clip art images of a Christmas tree, a house, fairy lights and a star. And then there's the off and on buttons. These I created myself. You could just create your own or use other ones for those. And then there is the CSS file. Just a standard HTML CSS file that you can change if you want. To set the template and the theme, at the moment you have to edit the source code, which is web-power.py. There is a risk that that could get overwritten in the future if you install a new version, so I may look at pulling that out into a separate configuration file in future, but I've left it in here at the moment. So if we just scroll through the source code, we'll find the two settings here. Custom template sets the template. Now it normally has default in there, but I've changed it to the image. 
and the same with the custom theme. Normally it goes to default and I've created a custom theme called Christmas. And then you can see the interface here. This is on a web browser running on that screen. I've zoomed it out a little bit on this just to make sure it all fits on the screen. But this also works on any web browser or on the mobile phone as well. And it's just as simple as case of if you want to turn the light on, click on it on. And if you want to turn it off, click on it off. You can see, although it's very small that it does give you a bit of feedback to tell you which one you've turned on and off. Note this is just a one-way pie mode that it's designed for so it sends the signal out but doesn't actually know if that was received and that's just a feature of this initial version. So that's the new interface with the on and off buttons overlaid on top of the other images. Could do this in different buttons or however you wanted really. So please give this video a like if you think that this is an improved feature. And let me know if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. Perhaps an explanation of using Python Bottle, which is what I used in this code. If so, then please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you in a future video.